Hi, this is Bonnie, and today I am going to be making what I call kind of like a book card. So I can have the picture of my design I'm going to stamp in the center to make it look like a book. And this is a really great uh, die to use for that. This die is from Studio Light, and I'm just going to give you some information about that in case you want to get this yourself. And it is SLESCD125. And there's not any other name for it than that. And this is what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. I've already got the pieces cut out so you can see. And I also adapted the centerpiece because I didn't want two separate pieces like pages. I wanted it to be one solid piece in the center. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we start to put it together. So the pieces that you're going to need, all of it actually, um, but what you're going to cut out is I decided to make the background um, in black. And um, you can see there's a lot of folds and score lines in there that I'm going to have to um, move around. And then you're going to be cutting out. I'm going to show you these pieces just so you know what I'm talking about. You're going to be cutting out two pieces of two pieces of the two two of these pieces and what they are all the gray just so that you know what I did are going to be the mats on this card everything in color is going to be the top piece so all these pieces will go on top of here just like I'm showing you and I'll be gluing those all down but I'm just going to lay these on here because you're going to understand that without watching me glue and then there's four of these small rectangles that will be going here. And you'll be able to see, like I said, there are score lines. And then you just put these exactly in the center of those score lines. And there's top and bottom. And then there's this little tiny lip to make it, to me, in my opinion, look like it's the pages of a book. And that is what these tiny pieces are. And those will be glued right in the center of those rectangles. I'll try to lift this up. I'm gonna show you once I glue it all down um, what, what I'm talking about. Let me get that a little closer. You can see the score lines. And then the next piece, oh, I forgot to show you. These will go on top of all those rectangles. It's really simple to put together. You just have to do a little bit of cutting, die cutting. And for this um, piece, I used a Fairy Hugs. The color is a Fairy Hugs craft paper called Tangle Whisper. So this piece right here, what you would normally do for this die, I'm gonna pull those pieces out so you can see what I'm talking about. And I am not doing that part of this die. I decided to do my own. I just need to pull it out. I wasn't planning on showing you, thinking it made sense, but I thought I might as well show you. All right, so there's two pieces. There's a piece that's, make sure I've got the two pieces. Yes, okay. So there's a piece that would be a mat, and then there's a piece that would be a color. But I wanted my scene to be continuous like it's a center fold of a pitch for a pitcher. So what I decided to do is I measured that piece and um, figured out what that would be. And you can kind of see how I scored that in the center. That's gonna be my mat for the center. I am not scoring this one until after I stamp it. And that is gonna be in the center. Now, just to give you some idea, your design that you're gonna be putting on here is gonna be um, somewhat small. It's four and a quarter by three and a half. So that is what you will be stamping on. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue everything down except for this blue piece on the top because we're gonna do some stamping. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have all the outside areas, which would be kind of like the frame area, all glued down. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like close up. So then the next thing that I did, I did not score these and crease them before I put them on, I did it afterwards. So what you do 
is obviously there's the score lines. And, and what I did first, what well, doesn't really matter what you do first, but this um, centerpiece, the book part folds in right there. It creases in the center. And then these pieces here also crease in the center. This one will crease down and then this will be folded down. So it's like mountain, valley, and mountains. Valley and mountain, just like, I believe that's right. Hold on a second, just to make sure I'm right. It'll stand up that way. Yes. Okay, I'm making sure it's standing up just to let you know. And then this part to make it look like it's the pages, there's two folds or two creases here. So that first crease goes in Just like that, it creases in. Let's see if you can see that better on the side. It creases in. And then this one creases in also. So it kind of looks like I said, the pages of a book. And that's kind of like how it stands up. Pretty sure, oh no, they have theirs going out. So let's do that the other way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. They do have this part coming out because it's more of a um, stands it up a little bit better so let's take a look at that again from the side so you can see what I'm saying these pieces come up and the middle piece goes back or the crease of the book so quite frankly when it folds up it folds up nice like this it can fold up like this. So you can actually put a cover on there if you really want to, but you can't really um, glue anything to this part here. You just have to do it around the outside, I guess. Anyway, that's that part. Your next part is gonna be putting this on. Now, the reason why they put two separate pieces, it makes it easier for you to fold it. Because the second you start putting glue on this and try to make sure that it folds right together, you can have issues. So what I usually do, and I'm gonna make sure this works. Um, what I usually do is I just put some glue on one side, like that. And then I come over here and I make sure that it's gonna be lined up the way I want it to be. And I just put that part down. Okay, I make sure that that's gonna close for me. Yes, it is. But I'm not gonna glue down there. I'm only gonna glue down here to get the other side on. I'm not gonna glue in the crease at all. But now to make sure that it fits right, I'm folding it in half and then pushing it down. And then that piece will adhere okay. Otherwise you have problems. That's just how I do it. So I'm not gonna put the crease in here until I've stamped it. And then that's gonna go here in the center. And you can put any design in there that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up and then we'll get that together. Okay, so we are all set up to go ahead and put the stamps on. And I am using Lilani's Peony, which is a brand new um, Fairy Hugs Flower Fairy. And it comes with the three stamps that you can see shown here. And I am going to stamp this largest one. Whoops. I'm going to stamp this one in a gray because I want to not, I'm not gonna make a mask and by using the gray, whoops, I'm not gonna have to use the mask. So I'm gonna use Morning Mist and I'm just gonna stamp that one part and hopefully it's just the one time because I wanna keep it a lighter gray. I'm also trying to think about how she's going to situate, be situated in that crease. And there's going to be a part of her that is going to be in the crease, in the center. I forgot to put my um, magnet in there. That's okay, because I'm just going to go ahead and use this 
poker tool to keep my paper down. There we go. I'm going to have to stamp that again. Put my magnet in. Maybe it'll hit that part. No, I didn't ink it. It's that bottom part I missed. Okay. Let's try to touch that bit. There we go. Okay. So that's all set up. Just fix that little bit down there that didn't get stamped. And then I am going to take the fairy. That's why I didn't have my magnet. I had to move my paper thing here. I'm gonna to try to get her over to the side as much as I can, because I know that crease is gonna probably go right down there. Although if I do that, if I move her over, she'll be on this side of the crease. But I don't really think I want her head in the middle, so I'm gonna move her over as much as I can. So she'll be kind of like over that other flower. So you have to think about that when you go to put these on, and I could have really moved that whole flower over a little bit and would have made her over further. It's what I should have done, but I hadn't practiced this um, setup on here yet, so didn't realize it. Okay, so she set on there. She is gonna be stamped in the nocturne. Try to get my magnet down here. Okay. Things go a little bit smoother when you've made the card once before you get on, but sometimes you just wing it. Okay, I need that off of my lid. I don't need the black streak if it decides to show up. Okay, so she'll be sitting right on top of that edge. And it's going to be kind of a simple scene because it's be going and because of what I'm limited to, I can add more to it though, and I might. So the top part of her needs to be inked up better. I got this new tool, but I don't know that it's going to work on here because it's so small. I call it like the hockey puck thing. You know what you use for a hockey thing? A hockey table, whatever. I don't know what they paddles. I think they call them paddles. She still needs a little bit more ink. All right, that's Nocturne. It helps when you keep the lids close. Okay. Try that again. I probably should take that piece of paper from underneath, but that works. Okay, good. We've got her all set up. You can see she's on there. She's sitting on that little edge. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to add a little butterfly. This is from a different set and I need to figure that out to tell you what that is. Cause I forgot to pull that one. But this comes with another flower fairy set, the little butterfly. And I'm gonna make that butterfly also be in black cause they are focus. Our focus point, our focus stamp. Okay, I like that works fine. And then I also have um, the fairy words set. And I was going to do happy birthday, but there wasn't enough room. So I'm just going to do hello. And I thought that worked really well with a butterfly. This is what I don't need under here right now. It gives me a little bit of a bump. So I'm gonna put the hello, it kind of fits right there at the edge of her legs. And again, I'm gonna use Nocturne. Okay, so that worked out really, really well. And like I said, I had not made this design yet. And looking at it, it does look a little bit, you can always add more to your designs. So I'm gonna add a little bit right here. This particular um, set comes with um, two other flowers. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna make that go the other way around. I always, like I said, test these out to get some idea of what I wanna do. I'm gonna use a smaller one. I just need to pull that one out really quickly. I can find it. 
find it. Okay, there it is. Sorry about that, I just hadn't planned to do that, but I think this will work. I think I'm gonna go the other way with it. I don't know. I don't think that'll work. I think I want more of the flower. So I need to put this paper back in there. So it doesn't get all over my back of my mat. And put that there. And I'm gonna use Nocturne again for this one because I'll probably color that in with my color pencils. back on before I forget. Alright. Alright, that works really well. I think that gives it a little bit more balance. Again, you can add a lot more to this if you want to, but this is just to give you an idea of what you can do for this center scene. It is smaller, but you can see you don't have to have your entire stamps on one design. You can always go off to the side with it. So I'm going to go ahead and cover up my ink really quick and show this to you. Okay. So how this will go on, well, this will go right in the center. But I'm going to go ahead and color those in. Um, I'm trying to think if I can actually color them in and show you, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead and color them in, and then I'll show you how I'm going to crease that. So, I'll be right back. Okay, let's start coloring. I am going to use Prismacolor um, 994, and this is Processed Red. And this is going to be my darker color. And, again, I am not going to color this whole thing. I'm just going to show you how I do some of the petals. And then you can go ahead and color those up yourself if you want. This is just to give you an idea. And what I try to do is I try to find what I kind of think is the shadows with my darkest color. And um, then I come in with a mid color. So that's kind of like how we're going to do those. And, and then the next color I'm going to go with will be a lighter shade, a medium shade, and I think you can see that. That's my medium shade and it's picking up the edge of the other and the darker color. And then I'll come in with yet another lighter color. Just make it simple. So you can kind of see how that goes. I'm going to go ahead and get this piece right here too. Okay, so now I'm going to go with my lightest color. And that's going to be... I think I told you this one. Maybe I didn't. This one's just... Um, this one's actually called Pink. And this one is called um, Deco Peach. And that's going to be in the center. Actually, that might need a little bit more color than the peach. I'm going to go for a darker color. I'm going to go for the blush pink. Yeah, that helps. Okay. This one should have been sharpened. It would have looked a little bit better. Okay, so that's what the petals will look like just to give you an idea. And I'll do the same for up there. And then for the leaves, I will pick again a darker color and this one's gonna be grass green. Now this is gonna be a little bit different because it's mostly open. Um, it's not coloring on top of a, a gray scale. You're gonna be coloring like you normally, kind of like would color if you were doing Copics coloring. So um, I'm gonna probably be able to go with a darker one for this. And I, that was grass green. This one actually is dark green. 
So I'm going to come back in there because I want a little bit more of a shadow. And I'm coloring kind of like on top of the veining. You can see that. And that's what that's going to be. I probably should have done the dark first, but that's all right. It works. And then I need a lighter color, and that is going to be, whoops, throwing my pencils. And that's going to be the spring green. And if you like these to be darker, then I would say you start with a, a darker color. And then your medium color would be obviously medium. And then it wouldn't be as, this one's a little bit of a brighter leaf. But that works. And then these over here, I'll probably stay in the same family and uh, pinks. And, but you could change those out, they could be blue. And I'm just gonna use the darker color and I'm just, I would just go in there and, and carefully color in those little petals. And that's going to take you some time because those are small and a steady hand. And then the center, uh, there's a flower like in the center. I'm just, I just kind of like do a circle and get that colored in. So that's what the three would be for, for the flowers. I also do something, we'll do something for her wings. And I think I'm gonna stay with a, with a blue color um, so she blends in. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, I am going to pull a color I think matches with the background, a little bit darker. And this is True Blue 903. And those are the ones I'm gonna come closer to her, be like the shadow. Like I said, this is really simple. This is not detailed um, coloring. And I don't know why my camera is wiggling. All right, so she is all set up that way. I wanna see if what it looks like to add the blue for her outfit and I think that'll be fine. All right, I'm gonna go for another color blue. It's not very big, so I don't need to have a lot of variation. And this one is gonna be a blue violet lake is what it's called. I think I'm just gonna do the two variations instead of three, because it's so tiny. All right, so that's how that's gonna look. I'm gonna finish coloring. I just wanted you to get some idea of how you can color that up quickly. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more color to that, and I'll be back to show you how to put that in the center. Okay, so I've got that all colored up. That's, I'm going to probably add um, some more um, gold sparkle gel pen, and I'm going to do some sparkle in her wings as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to add this to the center. And what I did, I'm going to show you, is I laid it down, figured out where I wanted it, and I just put my fingernail right there so I knew the spot that I wanted. Now I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to line it up as best I can with the top and go right down on that crease. And it didn't turn out too bad where the crease is gonna be in the fairy after all. And I think you can see the score line there. And I'm just gonna fold that in half. I'm gonna go ahead and score that too so that it creases well for me. And then I'm going to be adding that to the front like I did the gray one. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the one side first. 
like I showed you before. Line that up. So that crease matches up with that crease and then I try to make sure that my borders look decent. Okay. And then I'm gonna fold that one over that way so I know it's gonna work. Yep. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a crease that way, just to make sure that it's folding the way I want it to and secure that down. All right. So we've got, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get that a little bit closer for you so you can see how that looks. So I've got, like I said, it has like a, a book look to it and it will stand up. So, and again, these are supposed to go this way to make it help it stand up better. So we're all set. So I'm gonna put this up a little bit so you can see it standing up. So that's how, whoops, make sure it stands. Because it does, there we go. And that's, whoops, scooch it in the camera. There we go. Okay, so that is our finished card. And I hope that you um, enjoyed that. And um, we'll stop back again. Um, our DT will be sharing more tutorials on things you can do with Fairy Hug stamps and other products from the Fairy Stamper store. Thanks so much for stopping by.